Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about five things that you must do on the day of your performance if you want to give your best possible performance. Hi, I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli. I'm the creator of the Art of Freedom Method for Conscious Living and Masterful Artistry. I'm also a professional violinist, uh, so you can see my violin, violin back there. And this is actually a timely topic for me today because I am going to be doing a recording session tonight, which is very much like a live performance um, and very different as well. But it does mean I want to give my best. And that means that I woke up this morning doing the things that I teach and know that help me to get myself on track to optimize my chances for the best possible recording session tonight. So I want to say hello to you coming on here. And if you're watching the replay, also hello. Whether it's now live or the replay, I love to know who's here and I love to know where people are from. So hello, Hala, I see that you're here. Welcome, I'm very glad you're here. And as I said, anybody just say hi and it's really nice to have an interactive experience here so that I'm not just here lecturing. <laughs> I love to get your feedback and um, tell me if the things are making sense as I'm going along and also share your experiences because other people watching are always interested to know um, other people's experiences as well, of course. Okay, the five things, of course, there are many things that are really good to take care of on a day of a performance, but as I was thinking about it, these are the five things that really don't depend on what kind of performance it is, whether it's live, in person, or on video, whether it's actually a performance, or it's like I'm doing tonight, a recording. Whatever the event is, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so I chose these five things also because the day of your performance could look very different from one time to the next. For instance, one time, not during COVID, but you know, in normal life, you might be traveling and you may not be able to organize your time in the same way that you would if you were at home with no other obligations for a whole day. So these five things are independent of your circumstances, okay? Hello, Olga. Olga can't connect, but you're here, aren't you? <laughs> and Sky is here. Hi. Hey, it's nice to have you. Okay, so here we go. The five things that I consider essential to optimize your chances of playing your best. So I'm assuming that the performance is later in the day. It's not like you're getting up and you're going to do your performance right away. But even so, these five things would help you out in that case as well. First thing, obviously you're going to wake, well, hopefully you're going to wake up because you slept the night before. Of course, you know, there are some times where you can't sleep because maybe you're really nervous or something. But let's just say you've slept. And I have to admit, I slept very little last night, not by choice, but by circumstance, which I will not go into right now. But I did sleep very little. And yet I am determined to be at my best tonight. And I was determined to show up for this live video, even though I'm really tired. <laughs> but anyway, the first thing is you wake up and you practice self-care. So as I said, I didn't sleep much, but I, and so I woke up not feeling at my best by far. In fact, I was feeling pretty crummy this morning in many ways, but it's essential to aim towards what you want in a very conscious way. And the first thing is to take care of your mind, body, soul, spirit, overall self. So that's something that you want to be developing as a regular practice. So that if you do wake up on the wrong side of the bed, so to speak, like I did this morning and nothing feels right and you can't think straight because you haven't slept well and other stuff is going on, if you have a routine that you've established over time, then you don't even have to think, which for me was very helpful this morning. You didn't have to think. It's just, okay, I know my routine. I'm just going to take myself through my routine because I know from experience that that is the way to get myself going in the direction that I want to go in. So self-care, 
means taking care of your mindset. This is maybe the most important thing of all the things I'm going to talk about today. You've got to get your mindset on track. You need to have a positive outlook and you have to have the skills to be able to do that. If you wake up, some people have a lot of performance anxiety and so it might be hard to sleep. This was not why I didn't sleep. In fact, I'm not experiencing much of that today at all, but for other reasons, I need to, to really get my mindset on track. But a lot of people do have performance anxiety and so it's very easy to wake up with negative, doubtful, fearful thoughts the morning of a performance. Does anybody out there ever experience that where you have a performance and you wake up and your mind goes into a panic? You're like, oh my God, I have a performance today. <laughs> I would love to see out here like who, who experiences that. That used to be me all the time. Like I would wake up and kind of freak out as soon as I woke up when I remembered that I had a performance. You know, if I do that, now I know exactly what to think and how to get my mind back on track. And it, it's like you flip it so that you can go into a positive direction. And there are tools that I teach my students all the time that are very specific, practical tools. In fact, I even have something called the Mindset Toolkit, if anybody's interested in that. It's specifically designed for musicians. It's called the Musician's Mindset Power Toolkit. If anybody wants that, just message me and I will let you know about how you can get that. It's a very, very, very powerful, simple, quick practice that gets your mindset going in a positive direction. So that's the mind part of the self-care. We're still on the very first of the five things we must do, and that is self-care. So you take care of your mindset. That's part of it. Then you've got to take care of your body. That's another part of it. Now, if you haven't slept much like me, there's not much you can do about that unless you have time during the day and you can you know, try to take a nap or at least rest. Like I probably won't be able to sleep during the day, but I can rest and that is important to rest in whatever way is going to be the most helpful for you. Make sure you, you rest, you eat well. Over time, you get to know what types of food help you when you're nervous or when you have a performance that's gonna require a lot of creative energy and endurance tonight, I'm gonna to require, my recording session is going to require a lot of stamina and endurance, I have no doubt. <laughs> so I really wanna make sure I'm eating the foods that are going to help support me in that. For me personally, I go for salmon or beef. <laughs> Those are my go-to foods that really, really help me, like a really, really good steak some people do not do well on that at all. Some people prefer not to eat much right before performance. I'm the other way. I would rather have a good steak because it slows me down. And it, it's like if there's any nervous energy up here or chatter, my digestive system takes that energy and it needs it, it does its thing down there so that I'm not frenetic up there. So I really enjoy having... Um, or even a hamburger, you know, some, um, or, you know, really, I go for the organic grass-fed, you know, meats. Um, that's very important to me also. The quality of the food that you eat is really important. Then you want to hydrate, of course, and have water with you. Tonight, during the recording session, I will absolutely have my water with me. And, you know, the usual things that you think about when you think about self-care, moving your body, um, I don't overdo any kind of exercise in the morning of a performance, but I'll, I will go for a walk or two during the day. I will make sure I get some sunlight, fresh air. Um, I might do very light exercise. I warm up with my violin early in the day, but I do not overdo it. And today I haven't even had time to do that yet, but that's okay. I'm going to do some in the afternoon. Okay, so that's the first thing is the self-care. And of course, there are many other things that we could put in there, like um, taking care of one's spirit. Um, if you like to pray or meditate, those are also very, very, very highly, highly recommended. Um, I would never not do those. So moving on to the second one, which kind of follows out of the, the spirit part, is you want to remember why you're doing what you're doing. So really connect to your purpose. 
Now you can go into a performance without having thought about any of that, and you can give a great performance even not really remembering your deep pur purpose or meaning for what you're doing. But if you really want to give your best performance, if you want to optimize your chances for being really inspired and being moved and moving your audiences with that deep inspiration, then it pays, it works to really remind yourself early in, early in the day and then throughout the day Kind of mentalize yourself towards that performance in a way that has a lot of meaning so that you're bringing a lot of beauty into your day and your performance because it's something really special that you're about to do at the same time i also counterbalance that by because i don't want to make my performance into something so elevated that i freak out because at the same time I want to recognize that this day is just like any other day. This moment is just like any other moment. So moving from momentary living smoothly and seamlessly into a performance like it's no big deal, it's just another activity in the day, thinking like that is also very important. So balancing the two things between super special, super important, meaningful, like the reason you're alive, but also, if you're doing that with everything that you do, no big deal. Just this, another activity. So I find that very helpful. The third thing, oh, this is a big one. This, this is one that is so, so, so useful for me. And I'm sure it will be to many of you out there. Is to, and I try to do this the day before usually, is, or the night before. I think about everything that I need to do the day of, and I get organized. Um, sometimes I leave that for the morning, but usually I don't. Usually I leave that, or I do that the night before. So I just make a list of all the things I need to do. And I start doing them early if I have the possibility to do that. So for instance, in the morning, you know, I'm, or the day before, I'm thinking about what I'm going to wear. <laughs> Can make sure all the clothes are ready. I've got my shoes. I have everything. I don't have to rush in the last minute to look for anything. The, the thing about getting organized and having your priorities straight, doing things earlier, is to minimize the potential for, you know, the unexpected is always going to happen. Something's going to come up, most likely, big or small, that is going to be unexpected, and you don't want to be thrown off. Or you want to optimize your chances for only being slightly affected and then being able to get right back on track with your mindset focused. So the way to do that, I have found, is to shift everything earlier. <laughs> I'm the type that usually shows up at the airport like at the last minute, but over time I've learned it's not worth the stress because, and I'm not even just talking about the airport now, I'm talking about um, if you have to Xerox some music um, before you get to the performance, do it early in the day. Don't do it on the way to the performance. Um, I mean, even better, do it the day before or the week before. But there are always going to be things that need to be done. You've got to remember to charge your phone, get your technology, get your camera, your tripod, or you know, if there's anything like that that you're bringing to a performance or if you're doing it at home with your video, you know, make sure your laptop is charged or plugged in and make sure your lights are set up. All these things, do them early so that you can do them slowly. And this is the really, really big important tip that I want to give you. When you're stressed, your body gets excited and tight and nervous and you tend to do things faster or you get sluggish <laughs> and, then, and then you don't do them until the last minute and then you freak out, right? Can you relate to this? Anybody feel like that? If you get nervous, everything kind of gets squished and compressed and, and you can also feel like you don't have enough time. So then you end up rushing around, which makes everything worse. You feel more nervous, more stressed, your body gets tight. That is not the way to optimize your chances for your best performance. Because your best performance is going to happen when you are in control, when you're centered, when you are not tight and compressed. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with being a little nervous. That's, that can just be normal. You can turn that into nervous excitement. 
that's another thing I teach my students. But you do want to be able to slow yourself down. <laughs> slow down. Do things kind of unusually slowly. Be really conscious of slowing down the day of. It can have a tremendously positive effect on your mindset, on your confidence levels. When you get organized early on, you have your lists, you've taken care of logistics and practicalities, you've called the people before that you need to call. So get that all out of the way as soon as you can so that you can move slowly through your day. That's a really, really important one. Super helpful. Um, number four, this is the fourth thing that I find absolutely essential. You want to really decide. You want to decide early in your day, like when you wake up, that you want to have a great day and a great performance. Just decide, all right? Just decide. And then along with that, it's like that decision you carry it through your day by being really, really present. It, this is another mindset piece, but I've made this a separate one because being present is the way that you're going to bring your best self moment by moment by moment into your performance. To be present and to be curious about your experience, to be aware of your experience, as soon as you wake up and to take that awareness, that mindful presence into the bathroom, into the shower, as you're brushing your teeth, down the steps, as you're making your coffee or your tea or having your breakfast, presence, to be present and centered. And, to, and that, that's another reason to slow down so that you can remember to pay attention moment to moment to moment. And then when you're warming up, you warm up with the minimum and you do it slowly and easily, paying more attention to your self, your own state, than all the stuff that you're doing out here. That's irrelevant. You've already practiced. You know how the stuff goes. Now it's time to trust and really, 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 really be present. Okay, super important, number four. Number five is an outgrowth of that and a support of that, which is to practice integration. What do I mean by that? Well, what I really mean for myself, and I know my students understand this, practice skills, practice the tools that you have, and hopefully you have some, and if you don't, please ask me for tools. And I will teach you the art of freedom. This is a way to integrate your thinking with your body. So your thoughts and your body, your feelings, emotions. You become more aware of how you are whole. So it's not, you're not taken over by your mind, like scattered thinking and, and you're just up in your head or off somewhere, not even in your body. Right? You don't want that. And you also don't want to be heavy in your body. You don't want to over-focus on your body uh, because that, that gives a, a heavy energy. You want to unite your thinking with your body in an uplifting way that allows you to be open and receptive. Why do you want that? Because that is what allows for creative flow. That's the only way really to access creative flow consistently and consciously. I love to be in flow when I am playing my instrument, when I'm walking down the street, when I'm talking right now, it is possible to access flow consciously and to do specific things to allow that flow to happen. The way I do this is very, very simple. There are practical steps that I teach that are based on the Alexander Technique. There are specific practical tools that actually come directly out of the system of the Alexander Technique called Primal Alexander. And the way to do this is to do it in advance of the day of the performance. So 
you learn certain awareness etudes like the cycle. The cycle is the first one I teach and if you're in this group you have easy access to it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube you also have easy access because there's a YouTube video. If you just look up my name and the cycle you'll find the first awareness etude that I teach everybody. And it's in the units section of the Mind, Body, Spirit Tribe here on Facebook. So integration, practice integration. There are a series of awareness etudes that I do every day. I do quite a few of them. Um, it's part of my normal warm-up routine before I play my violin. That, that side. <laughs> That's why it's weird looking into the camera like, is this my right arm? Yes, this is my right arm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so anyway, there are very, very specific, quick, easy ways to be centered and bring your whole self into your day and carry your whole self into your performance to optimize flow. And I would love to teach everybody here how to do that specifically. If you're interested, if you're my student, you already are learning how to do this. And before I finish up, I'm going to hop over to the comments and see what you all have to say. Olga, I'm glad you got it to work. Hello, Adisha. I like that. Hi, Jennifer and team. <laughs> great. Hi, Denise and Hank. Hey, great to have you all here. So that's those are the five things. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts, anything right now, if you want to throw it out into the comments, there's a bit of a lag, but today I am seeing the comments, which is great. <laughs> I'm very happy this is working today. It doesn't always work that way. Um, but anyway, these are the five things that, I mean, as I said before, there are many other things that we could put on this list. But regardless of your specific circumstances, these are five things that I feel are essential for anybody, any instrument, any type of performance, no matter where you are, no matter when the performance is, whether it's at home on video or it's out in the world somewhere, these five things are not dependent on circumstances and you have control over all of them. And isn't that encouraging? So you have the ability, 100%, to optimize your chances to play your absolute best whenever you want. It works best when you are practicing these types of things on a daily basis and when you have the awareness etudes especially that I teach. If you're doing those regularly and consistently then the day of the performance is really no big deal because you're just doing the same thing that you do every day. Um, you're just bringing more energy and more awareness to what you're doing and you're pacing yourself throughout the day, like I said, with organizing your time and your priorities so and slowing down so that you're really conserving your energy for that big burst of um, expression of your performance. So you want to kind of pace yourself to build up for that. So, okay, let me... Just see over here. Olga says, thank you. Glad this was helpful. Great. And Marlene and Denise, you are all very, very welcome. All right. So enjoy your week and wish me luck for my last recording session for tonight. I'm recording the Isai Balad. Last week I worked on the Bach uh, second partita and, and recorded the entire thing. That was a big, <laughs> a big deal for me, but I was very, very happy with how it came out. And I've been pre-recording bits and pieces of the Izai, but today I'm getting together with my producer in the evening. Um, and it's a very challenging thing because I am doing this recording remotely. So I have my studio, you can't see it, but on the other side of my laptop, there is a lot of tech <laughs> and on the floor, like, you don't even want to see how many wires I have down there on the floor connected to everything. <laughs> so it's kind of crazy. But, you know, and this is the first time I've tried to manage the tech at the same time that I am wanting to really be in my music. So that's, that's very challenging. But um, I think I'm learning how to do it. So wish me luck. And when it's all done, I will... I'll be getting the recording files back from my engineer who's in Virginia. I'll get the files probably 
late December, January at some point, sometime around then, I'm not exactly sure when. And I can't wait to hear the results and share them with all of you. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, thanks for being here and lots of love. And thanks for the luck. <laughs> Bye-bye.